Once you open the app, you get a very good animation and if you feel it delays the app launch, there is an option in settings to turn it off. So here we are in the game library and you can scroll through all the games the phone has. Since there is a lot of free space here and if you want the games to be displayed, there is a button on top and once you tap on it, this is how it looks now. In maximum cases, the app will automatically add the game and there is a plus button at the bottom if you want to add any other application which is not a game. This can also be done. There are some other options at the bottom and if you go to the console part, here you can see the CPU and GPU frequency and the temperature. The RAM memory and the phone storage are present at the bottom and the amount of time the phone will be on as per the current battery level will also be displayed. Once you tap on the X mode, you get a very good animation and you can turn on the X mode from the notification panel as well. So basically you can change all the hardware related settings of your device from here. You can connect with the other gamers and browse and share the game related information. You can also go through all the games that have the support for 144 and 120Hz. There is also a small list of games that have the support for controller. You can see the RGB and the A trigger section and there is a lot of customization with these. So I had to make separate videos and you should definitely watch those if you haven't watched them already. There is a very good chance that you may learn something new from that. If you go into the custom settings, you can see that the performance is in terms of level 1, 2 and 3. You can see the bars changing for each of the levels and you can use level 3 only with the aero active cooler as it says here. But there is a way by which you can use the level 3 performance on the ROG without the cooler itself and I will be showing you that in this video. There is one thing which I wanted to show you before getting into much more hardcore stuff and this thing is really important when you are playing a game. You can see the option of background connection whitelist and with this you can choose the application which can have the access to internet connection in background while you are playing a game. Especially in games like PUBG where ping is really important, you can unselect all the apps and you can have a better gaming experience. Now let's go to the scenario profile for one of the game and you can see a lot of settings with respect to performance, touch, display and network. And I will cover all the settings so make sure you are watching this video till the end. In touch section, you can lower the sensitivity values to avoid accidental touches and you can also increase or decrease the sliding precision. I would say you can lower all the three values here if you feel the touch of any game is not as per your expectation. This phone screen is really big and there is a chance that the palm might touch the two bottom corners. So you have the option of blocking the touch on the two corners and there are three predefined settings. The red area is the one which will not respond to touch when you are in a game and there is also an customized option here. In this case the blue part is the blocked touch area and here you can increase or decrease this area as per your requirement. You can set different refresh rate for each of the games from here and you can choose a setting similar to system or set it to auto or select a specific refresh rate. You can also change the refresh rate from Game Genie. I have covered the 8 triggers and macro in my previous videos and key mapping is only required when you are connected to controller or the desktop dock and I have made a video on that as well. You can find the links of all those videos in the description below. In the network section, you can prevent switching to Wi-Fi when you are on mobile data using this option. You can also restrict the usage of internet by any other application in background. This is the same thing which I said before. You can also turn on hyperfusion which I could see it not working. Maybe my understanding of this is not correct. I'm not sure if this is for adding internet speed or if this is for more stability. Here it says it will assist poor Wi-Fi connection and in most of the cases Wi-Fi are 99% stable and why would someone need an unstable mobile data to stabilize the internet connection. I entirely did not get the concept here. Please let me know in comments if you agree or disagree with me or if you have a different thought. You will be seeing this plus sign on the Wi-Fi icon when hyperfusion is on. Now coming to the performance part. Here you have 4 options and when you select game tuning, you will be seeing the same levels which you saw previously. And when you select level 3, you will be seeing the message of using it with the aero active cooler and tap on OK. And you can see the 5 red bars here indicating that the performance is at level 3 and I am not using any aero active cooler now. This mode will produce a lot of heat and be prepared for that. There is another option of hardcore tuning and this is where it gets interesting. 
You can set the GPU and CPU to work at their maximum speed and you can set the temperature limit at which the performance will not be altered. Suppose let's assume the medium limit is 42 and the phone's current temperature is 35 degrees. When you start a game the temperature will obviously start increasing and till it reaches 42 degrees the system will be running at the maximum performance. Once it has reached 42 degrees the system will avoid the usage of CPU and GPU at maximum frequency to avoid overheating. There is also an advanced settings and this is where it gets more interesting. Once you tap on the settings icon, it will take you to a window and you have a lots of settings that can be changed from here. Basically guys, Snapdragon 865 Plus has 8 cores, 4 of them are running at low frequency, 3 of them are running at medium frequency and the last one which is the prime core is running at a very high frequency of 3.09, rounded to 3.10 GHz. These cores are numbered from 0 to 7 and you can set the minimum and maximum frequency of each of these cores from here. Suppose you want the core 7 to be working only at the highest frequency of 3.10 GHz, you can set the minimum and maximum as the same value. Temperature control is same as what I said previously. I did try to understand other settings but could not confirm on any of those. If you know them, please comment below. Usually the settings on the left which is of blue color is the low setting and on the right we have the red color for high settings. Also, normally these settings are only available once you root your device, so it's a plus point that we can see these settings without rooting. In this way, you can change the settings from here and check if the performance has improved or the temperature is under control. If you feel you have screwed up things, there is a reset button here to reset the settings. I would suggest you to tap on the plus button, create a new profile and change the settings and once done, you can save them. So guys, please subscribe to All About Apps and do like this video. Let me know in comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Thanks for watching and have a great day.